The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, and welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show. I'm your guest host today, CammieBaker.com, and on the show today, I'm going to talk about dating with a dating <laughs> expert. We're going to learn how to be delicious, be delicious while we're dating. I met Eva at, oh gosh, well, Ruth's house. Mm -hmm. Ruth's house is a place that I partnered with, found, became friends with about three months ago. They are a community outreach place in the Haverhill, Massachusetts area, and they needed bras. So I did a bra <laughs> drive. You did. I did a Facebook Live in my bra, yeah. and Ruth's house said, well, we're hiring a, a marketing company. And I thought, oh, they're not going to like me at all. We're gonna, they're not going to want me to be a part. But lo and behold, it was Eva. It's like love at first sight. Love at first sight. <laughs> it was. It's so yummy to meet somebody that yeah. you have total alignment with. Yeah. You know, big visions, marketing ideas, talking about funnels, branding. It's yummy good. And now, yes. on top of all the branding and the, and the marketing that you do for so many other companies, you're creating a new brand for yourself. I am. Um, so I have a master's in communications. And that's what I do for my main business. Uh, but one of the things that, I, that I've always been in love with is being in love, you know, mm. and watching people be in love and watching those Hallmark movies and those love stories. Uh, my parents have a really beautiful love story. And I, I, and I say to my dad, I'm like, I think you kind of ruined me because you uh. really have a, you know, a fairy tale story with my mom still together. 49 years strong, nice. almost 50. Um, and, you know, really, I think looking at the communications around love, I think that we can really create a whole new context, a whole new process around how people talk to each other, a whole new design around dating. Um, and the more I look at my business, the more I look at sometimes you can apply those same business principles to dating. Well, about eight months ago, I actually did a Facebook Live, and I don't remember exactly the caption, but it said something like, comparing online dating to marketing your business. Yeah. Cami Baker, how would you do that? And I did a Facebook Live about that, that, yeah. you know, the one thing, the one thing people have to market in online dating, the one thing is the most important thing, you. Right. You're marketing yourself. How can people... It just goes to show how much people don't know right. about marketing and presenting themselves. Right. And so not only can we create a whole new language around it, but we need to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at it, I think a lot of people, and you know, this is myself included, at different points in my life, you know, I had different levels of wellness around dating. You know, when you first start out and you just get out of college, you know, you're you know, you're so young and such a baby and you're probably struggling. I remember my first job out of college, I was making $22,000 a year, didn't have two nickels to rub together. You know, was that the best time to date? Eh, probably not, because I was struggling to pay my rent and pay my thing and get my feet wet in my career. You know, and then when you look at people when they're dealing with a soon breakup, sometimes people break up and then boom, they jump right into a relationship. Rebound. Sometimes it's not the best idea. No, not the best. So we look at something that we call the goddess primer. We have um, the women's side almost done, so that'll be done soon and um, up within the next week. And then, um, and we really look at ourselves. You know, what are the categories of wellness and where am I in those categories? And how do I look at my life in such a way that I can bring my wellness to a whole new level in four weeks? So mm. it's like high impact, like really, but you really have to have, you know, a measure. You have to be able to measure where am I today and where do I want to be. So now who is this for? Is it for 20, 30, 40? Is it for everybody or is it older or younger? Does it's it matter? for everybody. It really is for everybody. Um, you know, there are just some things that are just, they make a lot of sense that are easy. Like until you know that you have chemistry with somebody, there's no point in going on a three hour date. Mm -hmm. You know, I do something called a uh, date zero. So what you do is you go out, you really only need 15 minutes, but you really can't like have 
someone show up on a date for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you give them an hour. You know, one drink, one cup of coffee, that's it, in and out. If you want to have a new date, you know, and you're the woman, you know, you let him ask you on a date and make sure that it's mutual. If you don't want a date, you convert them to a friend. And that's really one of the other things is how do you look at, because everybody you meet has a place in your life. You just have to make sure that they're in the right bucket. Sometimes, you know, dating isn't the right buck for, bucket for us. Sometimes friendship's the right bucket. Well, you know, you, you just mentioned something about the guy asking mm -hmm. for the date. What are your thoughts on women asking men out? Because we've talked about this. We have. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, and I've talked about it on the show. I've had um, Dr. Susan Trotter on mm -hmm. before. She's a dating um, expert yeah. and other people. We, because of, you know, I'm 50 years old. I'm in the yeah. dating world. And everybody seems to know it now. Um, I, I find that there's such a lack of communication. Mm -hmm. And men, I don't know about women too, but men seem to be really intimidated and they have a hard time even asking you on a date or even, right. you know, I, I find myself initiating it, not because I'm that assertive, but because they just aren't. Can I offer you something? Please. So, I mean, you also have to, I mean, I think part of the goddess primer is really understanding like who you are as a human being. So like, I know you, I love you, like, and, and I'm fairly confident in business and in my personal life, and I sometimes feel intimidated by you, not because <laughs> of anything except that I'm impressed. You know what I mean? I have respect for you. Um, and I think that sometimes that's scary when you have really high-powered women. Um, and I think, if I could recommend, you know, you really have to elevate, you know, the type of men that you date. You know, like, you need to date, like, CEOs. You need to date some, you know, serial entrepreneurs. Like, I just don't think that you can go out and, you know, date, true everybody that yeah so you are i mean because of who you are i think your dating pool is small so <laughs> that's like the only nice way i can put it <laughs> well that's extremely flattering that's very nice of you to say so in your expertise okay where is this small pool at referrals i think i think you i think you need to you know have conversations with some women that are probably similar caliber to you and say, hey, go find me a man. I actually have a friend, uh, George Dubeck, shout out George. George <laughs> is in his 70s and way back in the 70s and 80s, he actually did some um, dating coaching and mm -hmm. things. He was actually on the Sally Jesse Raphael show. I watched oh the episode. Gosh. Back yeah. in the day? Yeah. The big hair, the <laughs> whole the thing. Hair. Well, he said he was, you know, he was partier, had the, the you know, T-top, Trans Am, the whole thing. Yeah. And he said when he was ready to find his mate, yeah. he wrote out a whole list yeah. of all of his qualities, characteristics, physical, how she, how she talked, everything. Yeah. And he wrote it out, and he said then he gave it to 20 of his friends, mm -hmm. and he said, when you find her, introduce her to me. And he said yeah. within three or four months, he was introduced, and I actually met her the last time I was down in Florida. Yep. They've been married for like 35 years now. Yep. I mean, when you think about the law of attraction, like sometimes, you know, we walk around and we have no idea what we're looking for. You know, and at one point in my life, I developed a list, and someone had asked me on a date, and I went, and, uh, and this is back in the Palm Pilot days. Remember the Palm Pilot? I had my whole list in my Palm Pilot, and uh, I kind of was getting a sense that it might not be right. And I was like, hey, do you want to see my list of what I want in a guy? And I literally handed him my Palm Pilot. <laughs> And he was like, this is not me. You know, and it's interesting <laughs> because to know. I think just as importantly as to identify who's right, it's important to identify who's not quite right. And I think, you know, when I was back on dating apps, you know, I've since taken myself off and taken a break. Um, but when I was on dating apps, one of the things that I said is, if you're not good for me, I got a ton of friends. You know, and I think that that's something that's missing in the dating world, too, is really like community dating. You know, there are so many great guys out there, and just because they're not great for me doesn't mean that they're not great for one of my, you know, 25 girlfriends that I completely love. True that. And, you know, just like any goal, you know, if you don't, like I tell my clients, people don't have a hard time achieving the, their goals. Mm -hmm. They have a hard time setting them. Right. And you can be the most beautiful ship on the ocean, but if you don't have the sail up and the rudder in, you're not going anywhere. Exactly. So having that list is actually a good for me to focus in on exactly what I'm looking for. And every time I read it to somebody, they're like, wow. Um, you're not asking for much. And it's like, hey, he exists. He's out there. You know what? I mean, here's the thing. You can have anything you want. Mm -hmm. It is entirely possible. Like, and it takes a little bit of patience. And it, you, and that's where, like, the goddess primer comes in. You know, it's really like cleaning up any of that negative space that's, like, floating around, you so know? So talk about the goddess primer. What does that mean? Yeah, so we look at... Um, 
right now we have seven categories of wellness, but I've been doing some research and I have a couple more to add. Um, and looking at yourself in every area of life, like one of my best girlfriends, she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit overweight and I don't want to date. You know, and as much as I love her and I think that she is the best catch in the universe, you know, until she's ready, she's not going to be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, so she would probably score herself a one in that category. So in that, after that question, you have a series of questions is, what do you need to do to make a difference in this area and to move your number up three points? And then um, it's like, what actions am I going to take this week? Mm. And it's basically the same question over and over again. And I give you four weeks. Hopefully, you can bang it out in four weeks. You know, sometimes you need a little more time. If you so. have a goal. Exactly. Mm. Weight is a little bit of a hard one. You know, and it's, you know, finances, a little bit of a hard one. You know, living situation, you can, you know, clean up your apartment. So some things are easier than others. Spirituality, eh. I've been meeting to go to church. Oh, that's easy. Just show up on a Sunday, mm. you know, or do your meditation or yoga, whatever your version of church and spirituality is. So it's really a book that you can just lay on your table, you know, your nightstand next to your bed. You look at it in the morning and you look at it at night. And, you know, the other thing that comes along with, I'm doing a special promotion, um, $99 for all four of my classes, and it comes with this awesome kit and a booklet and I think a tank top, we're doing all these crazy things, and some love <laughs> potion in there, so we're doing some fun stuff. Well, you're going to be doing some, some speed dating, some dating yeah. gatherings. Talk to us about that, too. Yeah, so um, there's a concept out there, and I, I'm going to take a spin off of it, and it's basically like pitch your, your friend. Mm. So, you know, you get a ton of people into a room, and uh, you have one minute to pitch your friend, and they get to, you know, highlight it, and you get to highlight them, and, you know, and it's like literally I could fill the room with all of my friends and pitch them all to everybody else. You so know. like you and I are there, there's yeah. a guy there, and I'm pitching you to the guy. You're pitching me to the room. To the room. Yes. Or I'm pitching you. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Because so many people feel very uncomfortable saying nice things about themselves. Exactly. And they have such a hard time accepting a compliment, too. Completely. And that's, and that's like one of the other points. Um, and one of the programs is your personal, you know, your personal celebrity brand. So every single person that comes through this, you know, the $99 program is going to work on their own celebrity brand. They're going to do their elevator pitch. You know, we're going to have opportunities for them to get great headshots and great group shots in, in settings. Um, and this is why this is so similar to business. It is. Because I, I did a speaking engagement a few months ago at one of the chambers okay. and I was talking about how people have such a hard time giving a good compliment mm -hmm. and even more so receiving it yeah. and there was a woman in the room and uh, we were talking about you know if I said hey that's a beautiful dress mm -hmm. and she said that she had a hard time accepting it because she felt like it made her seem um, I don't remember her words but stuck up or arrogant yeah. and I said me saying you have a beautiful dress how is that making you arrogant so we went through this whole talk yeah. about how easy it is to just say thank you. Right. Just say thank you. Right. And how empowering that is. Yeah. And it's really funny because I have, um, you know, sometimes I'll do initial consults with, you know, business people. And uh, they'll say, oh, I'm just very humble. I'm like, then you don't need me. If you're going to be humble and you're not going to brag about yourself and you're not going to say that you're the best thing since sight spread, you don't need a marketing person. Mm -hmm. Go and do your thing when you're ready to sell. When you're ready to go be a celebrity personality, when you're ready to make money, come back and talk to me because I can't work with that. Um, you know, on the dating side, it's a little more gentle. You know, it's um, really, you know, how do you, you know, and, and one of the coaching things is, you know, really just basically having someone sit there and be like, I'm going to compliment you for five minutes and you're going to respond. You know, and it's really just like, giving someone the chance to like be with someone else. I know, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I'm interested in men, you're interested in men, but to get used to someone saying, you know what, Kimmy, you look beautiful today. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, you are amazing. Yeah. And God, I completely love you. You know, and like just getting used to that uncomfortableness and just because it, when you, when you shoot down someone's compliment, that's like shooting that person down. Um, and shooting down a compliment is just a very self-centered way to be. And well, that's really what we're trying to do is how do you open your heart up? How do you open your life up? And I think it's really important that people understand that because like, we were having this conversation at this business meeting yeah. that when I say that's a beautiful dress and you say, oh, this whole thing, I got it on sale at Walmart or something, yeah. you know, or, or <laughs> oh, then you really are robbing that person exactly. of, of just feeling the joy. So I turned it back around. I said, when you compliment someone, when you see somebody looks lovely and you say that, 
doesn't it feel good to say that to them? Right. And when they when they revert it back, it takes that that away from you. So it is. It's, it's such a give and take, and yeah. people have such a hard time with that. Right. I know. Just recently, there was a guy that I was uh, texting with back and forth, you know, and I said something about how beautiful he was and mm. gave him some compliments, and he didn't even respond. Like, like, like twice. And I actually right. sent him a message. I said. Do compliments make you feel uncomfortable? Because you didn't yeah. even respond to that. Right. You know. What did he say? Actually, he said he said, "Oh, I guess I could read it to you." He, <laughs> said, <laughs> he said, "Oh, he said I guess I should have responded to that." Um, yeah, compliments just kind of roll off me. Thank you. Right. But see, I guess the other question is, is um, you know, when you think about like your children, you know, like what. Like, what do you want to leave them with? You know, do you want, like, when you love your children and you're unconditional, you know, you really could run around in your life and have those type of unconditionally loving relationships with your business partners, with your romantic partner, with your friends. You know, I, I actually just said to a client recently, um, just before Christmas, I was like, you know what, I love you. Thank you so much for your business. Mil Multi-millionaire, you know, has a fiance. You know, I show up once a week to my meeting and I do his marketing for him. And he was so taken aback and he was like, I love, I love it when you're here too, mm. you know? And it was just like such a weird dynamic, you know? And then I had, and then, cause then like you can really celebrate in, uh, with that person in other areas of life. You know, he's not only a client, but he's actually a friend. And I, you know, strangely enough, I have a lot of clients that are like that. I had, I invited one out for New Year's Eve and she was like, oh, this is my business consultant, but she's one of my best friends. And mm -hmm. I just, and it really had me thinking about, and this is where a lot of the courses come from. It's just kind of my daily interactions and, you know, and I was driving over and I was thinking about you and I was like, God, what is it with Cammie that makes me so, I don't want to say attracted to you, but like, like you so yeah. much. It isn't being attracted yeah, to you. Yeah, it's being you know? in alignment. Exactly. And there's four different types of chemistries and we have three of the four. The one we don't have is like the physical, mm. sexual chemistry, obviously, mm -hmm. but we have the others, you know, and I was just like, you know, you, we're going in the same direction, you know, we have the same intellectual, you know, and we have the same spiritual. We're up to the same stuff, you know, in life. and. And it's funny because you can really create that with anybody if you want to. When you find them in the right pond. So you talked about <laughs> you talked about the referral. So um, yeah. you know, online is I hate online dating. Just so painful. Yes. Um, At best. Right. So <laughs> have you considered doing some kind of matchmaking service? Yeah, I'm talking about it. Um, I have a couple of uh, partners that are very excited about it, um, and I really. You know, I think that matchmaking is going to be one of those things that will my or, my organization will evolve into. But I really think I'm looking at like the wellness portion first. You know, I think that um, wellness is an area, universal wellness, like wellness in all areas of life. I just think that we don't look at that enough. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because everything always reverts back to business to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, like like when I'm doing a cause marketing campaign. Yeah. People want to talk about the cause, and they want to talk about the campaign. What's the event? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I've learned to, to stop, take a step back, and say, wait a minute. You have 100, 500, 1,000 past clients. Yeah. You have people that you could, should, would be getting business from, serving, connecting with, etc. So just to your point, first of all, before we even start talking about the cause and the campaign, yeah. let's look at who you're being. Exactly. How are you showing up? Yeah. Because once you start doing all this stuff and people are Googling you, and same thing with dating. Mm. Once you start to really step into that and people are checking you out, are they seeing the best side of you? Right. Are they seeing the authentic side of you? Are they seeing the authentic side of you? And do you even know who you are? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah? That's the question. Is mm -hmm. You know, and it's funny, I think when I was younger, I definitely was a people pleaser. I was like, who do I need to be for you to love me? You know, and it's really tiring. You know, it's exhausting, you mm -hmm. know, and now, you know, and now that I've gotten to a point in my life and there's all different theories on dating and I've been watching them all for years now, just because I'm curious and, you know, I always knew I wanted to break out, you know, and there's one organization and they say, oh, you should just rotational date and date a million people until you find the one. And you know, at least in my life, I'm like, you know what, I'm okay being by myself. And if someone really amazing comes along, fantastic. And if they don't, my rotational dating is my business, is hanging out with people like you and going out to coffee with my girlfriends and mm -hmm. seeing bands, you know. So 
you know, it's funny because if you're doing all that rotational dating because you're so anxious about it, mm. you got to work on the anxious. Mm -hmm. It's not work on dating more men. Well, just, <laughs> just like a dog can smell fear, people can smell, smell the desperation. I have seen so many women and men yeah. that are just so desperate. You can right. smell it. You can see it. It's right. like, oh, my God, so unattractive to be that desperate. Right, right. or yeah. overthinking. Oh, my goodness. When's he going to text me? Go get busy. Go <laughs> yeah, I always say go volunteer. Go give blood. <laughs> Make a new business. Get a part-time job. That's so true. Well, even with, with networking, when, when I, I'll ask people, well, what are you up to? Like, mm. when people say, what do you do? What do you do? Well, what about what are you doing? Right. What are you doing in the right. world? I remember years ago, I volunteered at Make-A-Wish Foundation to be a, a blackjack dealer mm -hmm. for one night. Yeah. I had to go to school at... Uh, <laughs> I had to get state license yeah. to be a blackjack dealer for that one night. Yeah. And the reason I did it was, well, besides being of service and it yeah. was fun, was so that I'd have something to talk about. Right. So when people said, hey, what do you do? I said, I'm so glad you asked because I'm learning to be a blackjack dealer. Yeah. And at least it made something fun exactly. and engaging and different and right. conversation, right. which is also really good for dating because right. God knows people have a hard time with conversation. Exactly. Well, I think that I think this happens a lot on the men's side. You know, is there like I mean, and, and there's a whole you know, there's all these Facebook memes all the time. You know, as men have like four buckets. You know, and if you don't, if and my son, I say it to my son, I'm like, what are you thinking about? He's like, nothing. I'm like, what do you mean you're thinking about nothing? He's like, I'm not thinking about absolutely anything. <laughs> Like, and you know, literally, like I have like 27 different conversations going on in my own head. Yeah. And there's one where it looks like spaghetti, which is the women's, and then men are very compartmentalized, you know, and they call you when they feel like calling you. And then the question is, is how do you be the type of woman that um, your man or that man or whatever man, you know, just can't get enough of you, you know? You mentioned the other day something that my dating coach, Angeline Hart, um, <laughs> Love you, girl. Uh, that she mentioned to me about a book that she read about the anxious versus yeah. the attached, atta uh, 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 avoidant, avoidant, insecure. Yeah, talk my favorite. Talk Ugh. about that. I actually just talked about this at a networking meeting, and one guy wouldn't let me go. He was married, and he was like, "Oh my God, explain this more." <laughs> so there, you're, there are basically three categories. So you can either be a secure dater. Or you can be an anxious dater. And not just dater, relationship, relationship communicator, person. Exactly. person so. exactly. So there's a secure, anxious, and avoidant. So 70% of people that are on like online dating are avoidant because they're busy avoiding dating and Which being is in why relationships. So Angeline explained to me that the reason for this is because if you're secure, yeah. then you're probably still in a relationship and you have been for 20, 30 years and you're not on the right. dating side because you're in a secure relationship. Right. Or you're on and off. You get on a dating app right. and you're and like, boom, I found someone. And right. You, and you transition off of it. It, it. But she made such a great point that people that are on the online dating are the avoiders or the anxious yeah. because that's why they're there. So I'm sorry. Go exactly. Ahead. Yeah. So I, so one of my uh, business partners, he, he tells a story. Every time he tells it, he laughs. He goes, yeah, I went on one date with this girl and I was at a barbecue. I accidentally forgot my phone in the car or something or left it on a, the picnic table. And uh, he got back to it 300 text messages later. I was like, she's an, ang and I go, that's an anxious dater, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you know, it's that type of stuff that make that, that, that story. I mean, I probably have heard that story like 10 times, you know? Well, and so just for our, our viewers, anxious is somebody who needs uh, reaffirmation. They, they need to know that you're there. They need, you, they got to talk to you yeah. all the time. I yeah. mean, the, the, the guy that I escaped from in Washington, yeah. and you know, if he sent me a text, if I, if I didn't respond within two minutes, right. you know, the first text was nice. They would pro progressively get, where are you? Why aren't you answering me? What right. are you doing? Who are you with? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that there's the anxious are the people that just need all that affirmation. Right. And uh, and and they're the anxious and avoider. It's kind of the same thing. Well, no, avoiders. The avoiders opposite. Avoiders, avoiders. They back away. Yeah. Avoiders are like um, they don't let you get close. You know. And this is where you see like say that uh, a guy texts you and then you text him right back and then he doesn't text you back for two days. Yeah. Um, you know and. I'm a famous avoider, so I was an avoider for a long time in my mm. life. You know, I was like, I'll get to it when I get to it. I have my business that I'm running, you know. So, you know, and that's the other thing is it's, are you in a place where you want to actually be in a relationship? You know, there used, I used to travel two weeks a month, you know, and I just didn't have time to date. And mm. I, I was in and I was doing laundry and spending time with my friends and catching up on my volunteer work. And Well, and you need to know if the per if the person, if you're anxious yeah. and they're an avoider, Ugh. it's a big nightmare. Disaster. And, and you can't really take it personal. 
uh, in other words, he's not necessarily just avoiding you. Like, that's just who he's he is. Everything. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah. I dated one of those earlier this yeah. year. You know, for a couple of days, he'd be all about it. Yeah. And, I, and I would actually send him a text. I would say, hey, two days in a row, you sure you can handle this? Know. <laughs> you know? And <laughs> yeah. then, sure enough, he'd be gone for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Now, if, you, if, you, if you're a secure person and uh, you... Um, it, you're best to align with, anytime you're secure, it's best to align with the secure. Your second best would be an anxious person, but knowing that you need to fill a void for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then how you figure out that void is you look at the uh, book, The Five Love Languages. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, I have someone in my life, you know, a family member, and she is a, uh, a gift person. Mm -hmm. So I could really do like anything. I could, you know, do it. I could do anything wrong, right? And next time, I literally would drive through CVS and get a box of Ferrero Rocher candies, and I'll show up and be like, hey! You know, she could be completely mad at me. As soon as I walk in the door with a gift, forgiven. You know, so it's really funny how the love languages, you can really, like, cut to the chase if you know what someone's love languages are. We should do a book study on the love we languages. Should. We should do a lazy person's book study. <laughs> Only one where you like one. Everybody reads a chapter. You have to report back on your chapter. <laughs> I love that. I haven't done that. That's I should so do that with the with the Mingle to Millions book. Yeah. Mm. See, it always goes back to business for it me. It does. But that'd be a great way to even get uh, lead generate for your for your program yeah. too. You know, come yeah. into the. Okay, so we got a minute and a half left. Yep. Without selling anything, because we're on public TV, we don't do that. No. What kind of uh, what kind of advice? How can people find you? What's going on? Where they look? What's going on? Yep. So on Facebook, we have I post a lot of articles. You know, really like the leading edge. I call it the art and science of having conversations around love. Um, and I know you like that because you're an art and science girl too. But um, really looking at psychology today, you know, looking at some of the most recent research and data and scientific information about relationships and the, and the dynamics of it and the processes that work. So, you know, get to my Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.com, Be Delicious Dating. Um, and just take a look and follow it. You know, it's absolutely free. If you have any questions, inbox me. And for the last 30 seconds, let me just say, I've also hired Eva to help me with some of my marketing and branding because um, I've never met anyone who is quite as intuitive mm -hmm. and spot on and full of, full of, I, I want to say the, I, I can't say that. I can't, I'm trying to think of a word that replaces this. I can't say. Anyway, nice. she's awesome. <laughs> and I've hired her. So not only is dating your yeah. thing, but also marketing, branding, getting things out on social media, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Profitability. So. I'm good Profitab at selling. That's what I'm committed to. Profit, but monetizing. Is right? I want to make how you money. Mon how do you monetize that? Awesome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. As long as you don't try to sell it. Okay. Happiness Jungle in the house. Eva Monticello. Montebello. Montebello. Bye. <laughs>